The second type of attack we want to look at are adversarial patches. So a fast gradient sign method is good if you just want to uh, get your model to predict a different class by just a noise that humans can really not detect. However, it is hard to first of all well, get the model to predict a very specific class and it's also very difficult to actually generalize because you need to calculate the noise always for a new image. A different strategy which actually allows you to first of all uh, make your model predict always one specific class and generalizes over images are adversarial patches. So here instead of adding a little bit of noise we actually try to replace part of the image so that the model only focuses on this. Um, however this part is really a small part of the image um, while the tool class is still obvious for a human. Um, this method was proposed in 2017 and actually they also had here a very simple example they put on YouTube. So left you see the input image, this is a live feed image to a network trained on for example ImageNet. So the input here originally is a banana and you also see that the classifier output is a banana. If we now actually try to manipulate the image, so first they try to just put in an image of a toaster. Well, you see that the network is now a bit unsure if it's a banana or a toaster. However, if you now put in a specific patch, which we will see how it's learned, although it's not a toaster for a human, you clearly see it's a toaster now for um, the model. And the question is how can you actually create such patches that you can put in any possible image and make the network actually predict that class. And you see that the patch is actually much smaller than the actual image. We do this here um, in different ways. So uh, the original paper up here actually tried to create a patch which is applicable to many models, to uh, any possible rotation, scale and translation variance. So wherever you put it in the image in which rotation, etc. Here, just for simplicity, we will focus on just the translation invariance. So where we, for example, could put a patch anywhere in the image and actually then check, for example, how large does the image have to be to fool a network consistently. So this is why here we have a simple function where, for example, given the patch, I randomly place it in the image. And the idea here is actually that this patch we will design, so this patch will be then, for example, 32 times 32 pixels, and this is a parameter. So these are parameters we will learn in a standard training. So we will loop through our data set and try to maximize or minimize actually the loss for predicting always the same class, uh, despite whatever images as input. Um, and then we backpropagate through the network and just take the gradients for this patch. So we neglect all the gradients for the other part of the image, but just for the patch here. And that already allows us PyTorch to do that by just assigning a few indices here to our parameter. So given then the parameter, of course, we will have a range between minus infinity and infinity, and we have to map this to an image net uh, space, which is, of course, then with different ranges, um, as we only want to have values between 0 and 255 pixels wide. So that's basically what this patch forward method does. And then we have here a very simple evaluate method. Basically, if I give you a patch, we will put it randomly in the images in the whole evaluation dataset. How often do we actually fool the network? So that's also what we will check. And then you can see this is the whole loop just for training uh, the patch. And it's actually quite simple. So we create a parameter, which is the size of a patch just have a simple optimizer like SGD and then we have here our training loop so we have one target class we want this basically says okay for example we want to have a patch which always predicts toaster then we run our model on the image we calculate just the cross entropy loss for this target class for all the images and then optimize always our patch and that is a very simple loop and in the end we evaluate our patch so here for consistency, I basically split the training set into a train and validation part. So we can actually test it also on unseen images. However, in the experiments we've seen, none of the patches really overfit. So they already generalize also the training set. Therefore, the results I show later are actually then over the whole training set, also just trained on part of it. 
So first, um, what you could actually now train a lot of patches. Uh, however, this also takes some time on Colab. So uh, training a patch takes about a minute on the GPU. Uh, to not wait here a couple of minutes, I already prepared a few patches. First, we load here just the results, um, as also evaluating can take some time. And then I have here just a simple method, which would allow you to train more patches if you want. So here, I actually uh, prepared five different classes. So we try to uh, create a patch for toaster, for goldfish, for school bus, for lipstick and pineapple. So I picked the classes quite randomly and tried to cover every possible uh, domain. And we also try different patch sizes, so from 32 times 32 pixels up to 64 times 64 pix uh, pixels. First of all, we can actually try to visualize these patches, meaning that we just look at them, how they actually turned out after training. We um, provide here a small function to actually visualize it. We visualize them for each of the different classes and the different sizes, and there you see they are actually quite colorful. Um, so on the left here, you see all the patches we have trained to predict the class Toaster. These are the patches to predict the class Goldfish. This is School Bus, Lipstick, and this would be for Pineapple. And these are the different sizes. So up here is 32 times 32 pixels, down here 64 times 64. And there you see that some of them actually really look like the class. Like up here for the Goldfish, you can actually spot a Goldfish in it. The eye is quite characteristic as well as this pink-orange color. Uh, the school bus, for example, is very yellow, although you cannot really see a school bus in it. Um, the same here, for example, with a pineapple. You can often spot still the characteristic of the classes. However, it is not always so obvious for a human now to see, okay, this is now really a pineapple or this is really a goldfish. However, these patches will now help us to place randomly in an image and cause the network to predict this, our specific class. Um, we can first of all try that on a quantitative level, so meaning that we push our uh, patches now through the whole training set and evaluate how good we perform in fooling the network. Uh, we already prepared the results and just have to uh, plot them here as a table. So the left here is then the class name, and here you see the top one classification, so the accuracy of that all of the images are predicted as this class with a patch randomly placed in our image. And you see that the larger the patch gets, the better our accuracy, of course, becomes. And already for patch size of 64 times 64, we almost uh, fooled the network for every image, meaning that wherever I put the patch in the image and whatever image I actually have, I will fool the network. The same, even for 32 times 32, uh, image or patch, this only covers 2% of a whole image. We are able to fool a lot of uh, the images for the network. However, you also see some difference in the classes. So for example, pineapple and school bus seem to be very easy classes to fool a network with. Maybe just this characteristic yellow color or uh, the structure of a pineapple. While classes like toast and lipstick are more difficult. However, the larger the patch gets, you see we can basically fool the network with any possible class. We can also look at the top five uh, accuracy, and there we see, well, basically we have 100%, so 99% for all of the possible images means that the class, the class of a patch really gets up in the top five of the predictions. Let's actually now uh, try to perform some attacks and just visualize the effects so we have seen they work. However, can we actually spot it in our images? And indeed we can. So here you see this is this was our previous images with attention, and then we just add a small patch of a goldfish, and suddenly our model predicts goldfish. Of course, this uh, picture already had a goldfish, but from a great white shark, we also go back to goldfish as well as here. Although these are clearly sharks, the network predicts confidently with 100 percent that this is a goldfish. Where you see really I can place the patch wherever I want um, and have quite the freedom of fooling the network. Can also make it harder and now try to fool these fish images actually with a school bus. And if I try, uh, try the big patch here, you see that all of the images are predicted as a school bus. Also for human, you cannot spot any possible school bus in there. 
and sometimes even have to search for the patch. This way, this attack is so effective to now let the network predict a specific class. And you can do it now for almost every possible input image. If you have a model, for example, in an application which has a live feed video, you can just create such a patch, put it in the front of a camera, and then always get your class predicted. Some people already tried, for example, to create glasses um, with these uh, certain patterns, and they basically then stand in front of a camera, and the camera detects them as a specific person because of the pattern of their glasses. And there you see that this is actually quite dangerous, and we just uh, required a few lines of code to actually generate these patches.